One of the main things that I like about my favorite studios that I've worked at is um, that the uh, the gear doesn't ever slow down the creativity. You know, I've been to studios where you say, oh, well, I'm gonna lay down, I have this guitar idea. And, you know, by the time they go get like the best microphone and spend 30 minutes dialing in a compressor and, you know, the idea is lost. And I think my favorite studios I've worked at have that balance of like the gear is great and is going to sound good but ultimately the the most important piece of the puzzle I think is the the musician the idea the instrument you know there's there's so many other things so I, I definitely like all the I like my gear to be um, of a certain caliber but I don't like to slow down people because of my gear so I, I was able to use the Shelford channel on a everything from kick drum to drums to guitars to cello to vocals and I even did um, this audiobook session for somebody it was I think it was right before I got him and I thought well this is actually the perfect thing but what I what I like about it the most is that you know I do have a lot of uh, vintage gear but I can't it, it's in one direction and you can't you can't dial it back and the Shelford I think is able to get a diverse uh, accommodated a diverse number of things I used it, I ran the gamut with it like and uh, one thing I definitely found with it as well was um I have a new kick drum mic and I can never get any clarity out of that kick drum mic and it was like I've tried everything I've tried my suitor I always mess with it I'm always like EQing it to death and doing everything and I mean I plugged it in and was like oh there it is <laughs> you know you were commenting those guitars earlier I was having fun with the silk you know like uh, it seems like on a rock record a guitar or something like that you'd want to go um, put the silk feature on like the kind of high frequency stuff but I found myself going to the low frequency and just kind of having fun with that you know the the range of things you can do with it was definitely what I was having fun with I like having the balance of all that as you can see I mean I have like everything from you know tape machines to uh, you know prosumer boards to my studer that I love and uh, to things like tube gear like this that I just can crunch out, but the uh, that middle ground was was is super like invaluable to have, you know, because um, I don't have to constantly be switching around. I could stay on that, you know. As as you saw earlier today, I did that. I think I was doing guitar and then I had to do a scratch vocal. Just ran the scratch vocal, you know. With this band Wild Child, a lot of the scratch vocals stayed on this record because they sounded good. You know, usually at the end. In a session, if we're doing a scratch vocal, I assign like the crappiest pre to the scratch vocal. I'm like, oh, well, it's not going to be used. But then knowing, like, well, she's actually she actually may keep her scratch vocals, <laughs> so they have to sound good. You know, I can't just go into one of these pre. So uh, having that flexibility was super awesome. <laughs>